We are. Good yes. morning, everyone. I'm Debbie Kaufman. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we are finally ready to release EANS 2 funds, and Elizabeth uh, Gomez is here, and she's going to go over um, all of the information, and then we will um, open up for questions. So feel free to go ahead and put your questions in the chat or the Q&A. And Christine Grelly is on with us, so uh, she'll be monitoring that as, as well. And once Elizabeth is finished with her presentation, we'll open it back up, let open up everyone's microphones and uh, spend as much time as you need to be able to answer the questions. So good morning, welcome, glad you're here. Hope you had a great spring break. And Elizabeth, tell us about EANS 2. Thank you. Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, as Ms. Kaufman already told you, we're gonna talk about the emergency assistance for non-public schools, EANS program under the American Rescue Plan, also known as um, ARP EANS program. Um, that's what we're gonna be talking about. The goal for today is to have like, a, to give you a big picture of what the program is. So we would like for you to uh, post any questions that you might have throughout the entire presentation in our chat, because our goal um, after we answer as many as we can today, we're going to collect them all and we're going to answer each and every one of those questions that you might have. And we're going to post that on our Arkansas FAQ. So it is very, very important for us that you please post all the questions that you may have on the chat box. Um, so today um, we're going to talk about the ARP INS program, also known as INS2. This is similar and at the same time is a little bit different from the INS1 program under the CERSA Act. Um, and that's the reason why we're going to talk about this today um, as a big overview. So in here you can see um, some links and also uh, Lindsay is going to post these links on the chat if you want to jump in and look at it right now. Uh, but you're going to have access to the recording of this webinar and the slides later on, so you can come back and um, look for it um, as many times as you need to. And you can also contact us at any time if you have any questions. So um, this is not um, my screen is not. I'm sorry, presentation is the slideshow. Okay, there you go. So um, you all know that the American Rescue Plan um, AIMS program was signed in March um, 11 of 2021, but Arkansas was approved for the program on February of this year, February 18 of this year. So that's the reason why it's been a little bit of a delay between the day the ag was signed and us releasing the program to the non-public schools, but we are happy to tell you that we are ready to roll right now and the application is ready and it's actually open. It opens today. It is already open for you to get into it and fill out the application. Um, the application will be open until May 27 of 2022. This is for us to give you as plenty of times as you need to um, go through the application, find the information we are asking you to uh, fill it in for us to review it. If something is going on, uh, provide extra guidance for you to make um, to make the application as clean as good as possible for us to approve. It is our deep intention to approve as many schools as possible. So that's why we are given like a. a, a significant amount of time for you to um, work with the application. As you already know, this program uh, must be finalized by September 30 of 2024, um, which means that we have a very specific window to spend this money. Um, so those are very, very important. So keep in mind the May 27 deadline because that day the application will close at midnight. Um, so please, um, I would like to encourage you to fill out the application as soon as possible with all the information that, um, that, you, that you can provide us that we ask you there. Um, 
So let's talk a little bit about the eligibility criteria that we have. Um, here is where the INS1 program in INS2 changes a little bit. Some of the criteria are the same as we had within the previous INS program, uh, but there is one significant change in it, and it is that the ARP INS program is created to support schools that has a significant percentage of low-income students enrolled within the school year 1920. And also they were most impacted by the COVID-19 emergency. So this is the big change and I just wanna get up front with it. Uh, for the state of Arkansas, that significant percentage is gonna be 19.48%. And we know that probably schools are going to have a lot of questions about what it this means, what low income students means, how we calculate our percentage. Um, so you don't have to make calculations for us within the application. We are asking you for some data that you will have to provide and we will make that calculation. But if you want to uh, go ahead and check those numbers, we have created a um, special guide that talks about low income data that we're gonna be requesting to schools. Um, and, and the link to it is going to be on the chat for you to take a look at it and, and see also what, what type of data we're looking for. Um, if that you, we have, we has been as open as possible with the different type of data that you can use to provide uh, low, low income students data to us. Um, things like tuition assistance or scholarships or free and reduced lunch. Um, there are several that you can use. And, and again, we've been as open as possible to help out non-public schools within this application process. The other criteria that we have are very similar to the one we had for the CERSA uh, AIMS program. The non-public school has to be a nonprofit. Um, they have to be in existence and in operations before March 13 of 2020, when it was the day when the emergency was declared, um, has to be in operation following the state law. And that's something that is very, very important. Um, you, you're gonna have to provide uh, within the application your registration uh, with the state uh, for us to verify that you, um, that you are in operating in accordance to law, to state law. Um, also, we have uh, the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program um, eligibility criteria. If you apply and receive money, if you apply and if you apply to the PPP money that was created on or after December 27 of 2020, you are not eligible for the ARP program, the same criteria we had for the CERSA INS. Um, and the U.S. Department of Ed keep that in, in the requirements and there's nothing we can do, we can do about that. Um, so that, that's a very important date right there, December 27, 2020. If you apply before that, that's a whole different process and we can guide you to that. But if you apply for that one, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, and of course, something that is really important is that if you receive a prior uh, PPP uh, loan, that anything that you request us to provide you cannot be paid for that, that money that you received prior to it. So that's, those are really important points right there. Um, so the timeline to submit applications, as I said before, we're gonna have it open between March today, March the 29th through May the 27th. And you're gonna see a couple of links here on this slide. It's an online application. You don't have to fill out anything, print anything, email us anything, everything is online. Uh, a link very similar to this is on our INS webpage. Um, there you have the link on the chat and you're gonna have access to that too. Um, it's a very easy process. We use the same uh, tool for our CERSA INS and it works really, really well. And also here you can see a link to a PDF form of the application. This is for you to review it, to read it before and to get familiar with um, 
with the, the information that we are requesting you on the application. Something that is really important that I would like to point out is that even if you participate uh, with us in the SERSA INS program, you're gonna have to fill out a new application for ARP INS. Um, and that is because of the difference between the two programs. We have to have applications, new applications for the ARP INS. Um, so if you did it for SERSA INS, you're gonna be very familiar with the application. If you didn't, you can take a look at it to the printable version for you to get familiar with it. Um, another, important, another important point about the application is that um, we always request to non-public schools to provide three different school representatives with their, within their application. So we ask for a main school representative, for a fiscal agent, which is going to be the person in charge of submitting documents and request services to us, um, and a board member or a board member representative. And this uh, has to be three different people with three different phone numbers, three different email addresses within the application. If you cannot use the same person twice, um, and the reason for it is because if at some point down the line, when we are providing services to you through the program, we have um, we need to re request more information or we cannot contact one of the person, we have other two that we can go to and check with the school to work things out to provide services to you. Um, so let's talk a little bit now about the uses of funds. This is a very important thing because there are some confusions around there with um, the different programs that the Department of Ed released to public and non-public schools. And I would like to make emphasis on that because uh, that main difference may cause confusion with vendors and also with schools. So um, for the purpose of the ARP INS program, we at the, here at the Department of Education, we have to follow these three different guidance to determine if um, request from a non-public school is allowable or not. So the first two, which is the necessary and reasonable of the uh, request, they are based on the code of federal regulations that we have. And that code apply to basically everything we do with federal money. Uh, the third one, which is the allowability, it's connected very specifically to the guidance that we have from the Department of Ed regarding the use of funds for ARP INS. And um, we are always here, Lindsay and I are always here to help you, to guide you in the process. If you are not sure about um, if something that you would like to do with this money is allowable or not, um, we, we are always happy to, to guide you in that process. So talking about the services that you can request with the ARP INS money, it's a little bit different than the first round because with this money, we are only allowed to provide direct services to non-public schools. So the categories that we are using are the same. We can provide services to, uh, for cleaning supplies, for personal protective equipment, for uh, professional development to keep COVID you know, under control in your school setting. Um, we can provide services for educational technology, uh, reasonable transportation cost, redeveloping instructional or hybrid learning processes. Uh, those criteria are the same. Those, those categories are the same. The, the main difference between the two programs is that with ARP INS is gonna be direct services only. So there is no reimbursement allowed with ARP INS and there is nothing we can do about it. Um, so anything that you will do with this um, money to help your school um, is gonna be through direct services. And later on within the presentation, we're gonna talk a little bit more in detail about what that means and, and how the request process is. Um, something that I would like to mention here is the ventilation system and the window upgrade. Um, 
And again, I'm going to refer back to the main difference between the COVID money that was released for public schools versus the one that has been released for non-public schools. And uh, I have to say it here that um, the public school has some, a little bit more freedom than what non-public school has. And that itself represents a confusion to non-public schools and vendors as well. So within the first round, we had we received several questions in inquiries about ventilations and window improvement. Uh, there are simply no allowed under INS, and it wasn't allowed in the first round. They're not allowed now um, uh, either. And, um, and people always um, refer to, but the vendor told me this and this and that, or some other schools are doing this and this and that. And that might be true, but I um, assure you that it's not another non-public school in Arkansas. So I don't know how the program works in other states. And um, I know that there's, there has been a big difference between public and non-public schools. So just be mindful when you hear a sell, sell pitch from a vendor that they itself might not be clear about those differences. So uh, we have a very, very, um, strict guidance on ventilation systems and window improvements and that we have to stick to it. There, there, there's no other, there's no way around that, even though we know um, that those improvements are, you know, help a lot with the COVID spread. There's, there's nothing we can do about those um, guidance because they're very specific within the FAQ provided by the Department of Ed. Um, so for those that are familiar with the INS program, the INS One program, we uh, in Arkansas has been working through Class Wallet to provide services to non-public schools. Um, if you're not familiar to the program, it's a very easy tool to use. It's, it's online. It's every it, they, everything is there for you. Um, it's very user friendly, and we have different guides uh, for users and also for providers to help them go through the use of class wallet and we have also a wonderful technical support within them um, if you have any questions or troubles or anything um, and all, of course we are always um, happy to to help you with that so basically the process with this is you're going to fill out an application first and then you're going to be, when you're approved for the application, then you're going to get notification of the amount, the maximum amount of funds that you're going to be allowed to request from the program. And then you will receive um, an email from Class Wallet. You, there's nothing you have to do with them directly. They're going to reach out to you. Um, with the process to create an account, a login into an account and set the account for the ERP INS program. Um, and we have also with Class Wallet, we have some videos that we can refer you to on how to log in, how to uh, troubleshoot the, the, the site. Um, so if you have questions about that, please, Put that on the chat and we're going to be sure to get back to you on that information if you need it. Um, so now I would like to talk a little bit about uh, how to request uh, services with the ERP program and as I mentioned before it's going to be only direct services that's what we here call direct payments only and it's gonna be a three easy steps that you need to follow. They are the same that you have been doing with Sursa Inns if you request direct services. So I just wanna briefly go through them um, to help you understand the process. So always the first step will be for you to find any vendor that you would like to work with. So we don't have, we are Arkansas Department of Education, we don't have restrictions on which vendor you, you want to use. That's, um, that's very good because we are aware of some, of some non-public schools that are uh, like more in rural areas. And sometimes, you know, you have a vendor that you've been working with that you like the way they provide services to you. And we are happy to partner with you on that process to make things easier. Um, so the first step will be for you to decide which, with, which vendor you wanna work with 
and then um, ask them to register with us through Class Wallet. It's a very easy process. The pre-registration form, uh, the link to the pre-registration form for vendors is in our webpage. And it's a very simple process. We review the pre-registration form here. And if everything is according to law, we're gonna approve that vendor. And then uh, the next step is um, you need to um, you need to ask them for the quote and you know the product that you that you would like to purchase or a service that you would like to purchase from them. So within this second step, you have two different options. Um, if you are 100% sure that the services that you will be requesting is allowable under INS, you can gather all the documentation that we're going to talk in a minute and upload that into Class Wallet uh, for us to review, to review and approve. But if you are not 100% sure that the services that you will request is allowable under INS, you can always contact us. You can send us an email with the documents and we will review it for you and check, yes, this is good to go, or we need more information about this that you're requesting. Um, or sometimes we get back to you with questions like, have you think about this? Um, are you sure about this and this and this? Just to help you in, in the process. Um, and then we will send you an email with a pre-approval. That's, that's a, a, like a secure you know, document for you to know that after you've done all the process, you're gonna get approved because we already told you that it is allowable under INS. Um, so after you do either or, you, can, um, you, you need to gather all the documentations. And here, I want to be very specific about it. So with direct services, you need to have the invoice, uh, the final invoice that you need to have include in there the shipping cost and the class wallet fee. There is a 2.5 class percentage class wallet fee that you can charge to the program. And, and they can do that. We can pay that um, and the same thing with sh shipping cost. Uh, through in so but they those has to be reflected on the invoice in order for us to approve you that money you have to have a justification and that's very very important within the ins program because the justification is how you are telling us the connection between the service that you're requesting and the guidance that we have to approve that service so the justification part is really, really important. We also request an, uh, request an inventory spreadsheet. Uh, that it's more for technology, pretty much. Um, and it's, it's very important for us because we are using the INS money to pay for that uh, technology. If that means that, that, that the piece of equipment belongs to us, pretty much. Um, and another thing that is really, really important with direct services is the confirmation of services. Um, we cannot approve any request until services has been rendered, meaning that if you are um, using INS, ARP INS for tutoring, for example, we cannot pay that tutor in advance. They have to provide services to the students you submit all the documentations. Um, it could be monthly or it could, it could be every six months, however you uh, wanted to do it, but it has to be after those services has been rendered with students. The services has been provided already to the students. You submit everything to us and we approve the person get paid. And the same thing applies to everything. So um, something that is really important here is that if we are missing one of any of these documents in Class Wallet, we cannot approve anything until everything is in there. So maybe you send the invoice and the spreadsheet and the confirmation of services, but you forgot the justification, we cannot approve it. And the same thing with any other documents. So all the documents has to be in Class Wallet before we approve anything. Um, and since the justification and the inventory spreadsheet for equipment is so important, we have some guidance to help you with them. Um, 
and, um, and you can see the links in here and they're gonna be on the chat for you to take a look at it. Now I would like to talk a little bit about the approval timeline. This is another important point. We get a lot of uh, calls about this, like how long it will take for me to get the money. Uh, vendors are very, uh, sometimes like are concerned about this and they are very eager to know uh, how long it will get, you know, they will get their money back. And um, this is the process that we follow here. So we review all the documents. Um, if they are allowable and everything, it's, it's okay, it's good to go. We're gonna approve that. Then Class Wallet is gonna pull a report on the first and the 15th of each month. That report goes back to us on our finance office. They review that everything is good to go. They issue the payment. The money goes to Class Wallet, Class Wallet pay the vendor. So how, how long this process will take, it depends. Um, if the school is uh, very good on uploading all the documents into Class Wallet in a timely manner, Usually within a week, we are able to review everything and approve. But if something is missing, this timeline won't kick off. Uh, won't kick off until you upload everything into Class Wallet for us to review. Um, and there, is, there has been some confusion in there, so that's why I think it is very important for you to keep this in mind. Um, after that, usually within within a month. Uh, we are seeing payments getting out um, to vendors. Um, and there are some, some things in there. So just be mindful that we are doing our due diligence here to get money out as soon as, as, as we can. Uh, but we cannot move forward until you upload all the documents that we need into Class Wallet to get approval. Um, we have some technical support information here for you. We, here in Arkansas, we have our own FAQ. Of course, you have the access to the guidance from the Department of Education. The link was posted in the chat as well. But we have created um, our own FAQ with a specific Arkansas questions and answers for you. Um, so we would like for you to go in and take a look at it. Um, and we update that guide um, as frequent as needed based on the questions that people had. Uh, we also have here Class Wallet technical support. They are really good at it. If you have any troubles like logging in or how to set your account, they are really good providing uh, technical assistance to non-public schools about this and even vendors as well. Um, and of course, uh, uh, okay, there you go. And of course, uh, Lindsay and I, we are here to help you. Um, so you have their phone numbers, our email addresses. Um, we are happy to help you as much as we can. And I want to say this because sometimes people believe that we are the ugly person in the room. We are not. We are, we are here to help you. Um, spend this money. We want you to spend this money, um, but we have to follow guidance and we have to have documents. Uh, there is no other way. There is no way around that. I know that that could be a little bit different, um, but it is, it's, there's nothing we can do about it. So uh, please take these numbers and email addresses with you um, and call us, email us at any time and we will be very, very happy to guide you with the application process or uh, documents that you need, or if there something that you would like to do for your kiddos is allowable or not under ARP INS. Um, that's what we are here for, and we are happy to be here to help you with that. Um, so that's, that's all. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And I'm going to do my best to try to open all the mics um, for questions. So let me stop sharing here and see if they will allow me to unmute everyone. Uh, OK, so good work, Elizabeth. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you. 
for all your hard work on this. And, and to let everyone know, I don't know if you realize this, but Arkansas is one of few states that are below the 20% poverty level on their applications that are approved from that. And that's because of the hard work at the Arkansas Department of Ed in negotiating, and I use that term um, uh, intentionally, <laughs> in negotiating that poverty level rate for us because it was supposed to be, as most of you know by law, 40%, which would have disqualified nearly all of our non-public schools. So we thank you for that. And, um, you know, I know it took a long time to get it through. We were one of the last states, but it was because um, you were sticking with it and, and working on our behalf. And we, we certainly appreciate that and all your support um, all along the way. Just a point of clarification, and I wanna make sure that I get this right. So the if a school, because I'm looking at my screen and seeing that most schools here on the screen are EANS one participating schools. Mm -hmm. If they're EANS one, they were eligible for EANS one, they will be eligible for EANS two as long as they meet the poverty level. Um, um, point four Yes, but they're going to have to fill out an application. Yes. And with yes. those numbers, we're going to verify that because um, we have that new criteria about low income students and um, most impacted by COVID. So right. those are two things that are really, really important that we cannot um, overlook. So you, you, you are correct. So if they were a nonprofit before, if they were properly registered within the state of Arkansas um, and all of other criteria, and they meet the new one, um, it is more likely that they will be approved. There is nothing that will prevent them you know, from being approved, but they're gonna have to fill out an application and we're gonna review everything again. It's, it's just right. the way it needs to be. And will those applications, this is a question from Christy Dunn in the chat, but will those applications be approved as they come in? Or are you going to wait till May 27th when they're all due to approve them? Okay, so that's a very good question. Uh, we're gonna review them as they come. And if we find anything that needs to be corrected, um, I'm gonna contact the school to let them know, hey, um, I received your application, I re receive it. There is a problem with it that you need to correct and you need, you know, I, I will let you know in advance. But the final notification of approval is gonna be sent at the end. So after May the 28th. Um, the reason for that is because we have to wait until all the applicants fill out an application. I need to gather all the information to send that to our finance department for them to determine the, the maximum amount that they are eligible. So the answer is both. We're gonna be requesting, I mean, I'm gonna re be reviewing them as they come. If I found any problem, I'm gonna contact you. If I don't call you, it's because the application looks good, looks okay. Um, now, if you're not sure about your poverty uh, percentage, if, if your school has a significant poverty percentage, uh, we, we, we can talk about it. We, we can talk about it. I can provide you uh, after you send the application and you gave me please a week to look at it because it's only me and too many of you. Um, I'll be happy to, to take a look at it and, and tell you how the application looks like. But be mindful that the final and official notification of approval is going to be sent out after May the 27th. And Elizabeth, I think we want to add here, um, we were very clear with US Ed that uh, we were not asking our non-public schools to submit any documentation mm -hmm. um, about the students to us. Mm -hmm. I know that's a very sensitive um, endeavor. So we've asked, we've made it very clear with US Ed that we are not requesting any of those documents. We're just requesting your numbers. Mm -hmm. You are responsible for maintaining your records that support the numbers you have submitted. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're doing free and reduced forms or if you're doing scholarships, whatever, make sure that you're putting those documents um, in your files, in your EANS file, so that you have them for 
any auditing purposes, mm -hmm. but we will only be um, requesting the number. Um, and then we are trusting that you have the proper documentation to support the numbers. Yes, yes. And please um, refer to our special guidance that we create uh, regarding low income data. Um, there has a that guidance has a lot of information that might help you clarify some questions about that. Um, but yes, we, we don't want names of students uh, at all or any other personal information about them. That's, that's not what we're looking for. And actually we are requesting this just because the Department of Ed is making us to request this. That's, that's, that's the only reason why we are doing it. And Elizabeth, can you go ahead and put the um, link to the slides in our chat? Sure, yeah. Let me go ahead and, and look for it. And I think um, everything that Lindsay has posted has been links that were included um, in your slides and of course will be on the mm -hmm. um, web page. So if you're going to DESI, uh, to our DESI website, you know, you type in CARES Act into the search feature and it'll take you right to that page. And just as a reminder, you know, when we built that web page, we thought we were getting one pot of money, Who CARES. And then, you know, Two more pots of money rolled in, so we just kept adding to a, a web page that's now uh, totally out of control. But every time we think about uh, updating it, people go, "Don't move anything." I know exactly where everything I need is, so um, we've just left it alone, and we'll get through this. <laughs> so, any other questions? Open up your turn, unmute yourselves, and let's just talk. Anything we can do to help you think through? There are a couple away. questions in the chat. Um, one is if you have been using EANS one funds for a contract, can you change and use EANS two funds for future payments? Mm, that's that's a really, really good question. Um, we're gonna have to look into that just to be sure that we, uh, that it, it first, if it's allowable for us to do that, and then how, uh, what will be the process that we have to set um, not to get confused between one or the other. Um, so let's, let's, let us research that and, and get back to you on that with more information. So in certain class wallet, you're going to have two wallets if you're approved for both. You'll have your EANS one wallet and your EANS two wallet. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll be able to request your services through there. Um, I can only imagine that if you were switching uh, from EANS 1 to EANS 2, it either means you've um, used up all of your services in EANS 1, or you know this is dedicated and you want to use it in your EANS 2 because you still want to leave some window open for reimbursement of things out of EANS 1. Mm -hmm. So I can see um, that happening. I would just um, we're very attentive to um, changing guidance from US Ed about how long, you know, we say we're going to have these monies until 2024, but um, I wouldn't play around. Mm -hmm. If you need things, let's get those services scheduled, provided, obligated. Um, even into the system that maybe we can't pay for it yet, um, both with EANS 1 and EANS 2, because um, certainly U.S. Ed changes their minds. Mm -hmm. um, I think we saw that with equitable services during CARES Act. They change their mind. Um, they get challenged on something and they come back out with new guidance on these things. So um, we want to make sure that you get as much service as we can possibly provide with these funds. Mm -hmm. um, and, but there are conversations when they don't see the monies being expended or obligated, then um, legislators get nervous and try to take the money and use it for something else. So uh, just, I, I would not procrastinate in getting EANS 1 and um, EANS 2 um, obligated and um, spent. 
And along those same lines, Deborah, the, there's another question kind of similar to that. Um, and it's talking about when those funds would be available to use for services. So it sounds like the if a school is approved for EANS 2 or ARP EANS, by the way, they're called both things. I know everyone's getting tired of hearing these um, <laughs> hearing these things, but um, if they're approved for that, those funds would then not be available until summer at the earliest. Is that correct? Yes, that is that is correct. We we are doing our due diligence to get money out as soon as possible. But yeah, um, with the timeline that we have right now, it's probably summer. We we're talking about summertime, so you can. Um, Think about if you're doing a later summer school week, you can think about this money for that um, or just, you know, things that you need to get for the beginning of the next school year. Okay. And would vendors that were in EANS 1 automatically be approved for EANS 2 or with they are, No, they, they won't have to, pre, to register again because they are within our account. Uh, class wallet account. So um, if they are there, they are already there for both wallets. Elizabeth, do we have any non-public schools that are about to use up all of their EANS 1 funds? Not at all, ma'am. Nope. So I would encourage you, if you're doing after school, summer school, and you know, any of those things like that, that you're planning to um, provide those services, I would go ahead and get all those scheduled and um, spend like crazy. Yes. Um, another question is about um, the amount of money we think eligible schools will get. I'm, I'm guessing we have no idea if it's going to be similar to EANS 1 because we don't know the number of schools that will apply. We okay. don't based on the formulas are will be different because of the poverty level right am i correct yes you are absolutely correct about that um there is no way we can tell you in advance uh, in advance how much money we're talking about here actually our office is not the one who does that calculation that goes into our our finance people um and they're gonna start working on that after the application period has been closed uh, because we have to have all applicants together for them to make those numbers. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, there's a question. If if the school did not do something uh, under the CDC guidelines in the beginning, such as taking out carpet and putting in new flooring, is that allowable? Is that an allowable service under EANS 2? Well, you need to be mindful about that because we have a, a very strict restriction with EANS money about capital improvement. Mm -hmm. um, so we, you can send, if, if you intend to do something like that, you can send us an email uh, with the information that you have, like a quote or um, you know, the justification for us to look at it and, and research about that. But the INS guidance that we have is very, very specific about prohibiting um, services that represents a capital improvement to the building. Um, so if, if any services that you're requesting um, has connection with that, we cannot approve it. But we are always open to take a look at it and research it and see um special circumstances of your request because when we're talking about flooring or carpet that's a very general term so we're always open to take a look at it and see um if there is any openness for that but just keep in mind that anything that represents capital improvement to your building is not allowable under any any of the ins program There's, an, I think the last question that I'm seeing that hasn't been answered yet is, is to clarify direct services. Simply put, wouldn't that be, um, and this is very simplified, anything that's direct, that's allowable, that's been approved, and the direct payment goes to the vendor and doesn't come to the school or to an individual? Yes, correct, correct. Direct that that's what direct permit uh, direct payment services means. It's not um, we we class wallet pay directly to the vendor, but this is another important thing, and I would like to make a point on here. 
um, even though the payment goes directly to the vendor, the vendor is doing business with the school. So everything that you are going to negotiate with them about pricing, delivering, timeline, and documentations is, is between you and them because actually the school is the one who upload everything into Class Wallet for us to approve. Um, we have some calls from vendors asking things and we're like, we cannot tell you that you have to talk to the school because that is a person that you're doing business with. Um, and we, we like to be very mindful on that. We, we are trying here at the department to be the least inva uh, um, invasive as possible, you know, just to give you as much freedom as we possibly can um, to, to provide services. Does anyone have any other questions? I'm not seeing any more in the chat, but you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask a question. I would say, I would suggest you get your applications in sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. It's about that poverty level data, ask those early on so that you can get that resolved. And then also remember, if you're an EANS 1 participant, that there was a request sent a couple of weeks ago asking you for your poverty level data. Um, it was just a one pager. It was real simple to fill out, um, but the, the Department of Education needs that because they were asked for it, um, not because they wanted to collect more data. <laughs> But they need that. So if you could um, get that in sooner rather than later, they gave you until May 1st, but um, they have to turn in information um, to other people about that. So let's give them all the time that they need to get that done. And um, so just wanted to make those reminders. Brad, do you have a question? Yes. Is there uh, data available for me through Lindsay or through ANSA of just a list of items that or services that have been approved that we can look at, uh, you know, like, so we could get some idea of the, the things that are approved or have been approved. Um, no, we, we currently, mm -hmm. we, we do not have such a list, um, mm -hmm. mainly because um, we, are go, we are going on a case by case uh, basis reviewing requests. So uh, I, I would like to say that any idea that you have that you think is connected to any of those categories, just send it to us and, and we will be happy to guide you on the process. Does, does ANSA we, have anything like that, Christine? I think we had a, a, a sharing session a couple of months ago. Right. Where some ideas and I think I have notes from that that I'm happy to share with you but as Elizabeth said you still would have to go through the approval process for your school right. we'll look for that and send it to you but I know that would be greatly appreciated if we could have that data because because sometimes you don't even think some stuff is available thank you Christine that might be another good sharing session I've got a question. Open that the, up again. Who did the e, uh, email for the poverty level, level document come from? I don't remember seeing it, so I need to go back in my email and find that. It came from me, um, Elizabeth okay. Gomez at Arkansas.gov. If, if you do not find it, just please send me an email and I'll be happy to resend the information to you. All righty. Thank you. Absolutely. Elizabeth, was that, what, was that sent to the fiscal agents or the primary contacts or all? It was sent, that, that's, that's a really good question. It was sent actually to everybody that we have on the uh, application or the people that has been switching over time. Like we have principles that change over time. So we use the most recent information that we have, but if that person is no longer in your school and you didn't tell us, there is no way for us to know that. Um, so it was sent to the school representative, the fiscal agent, and the board member representative as well. Um, 
So if you notice that you didn't get it, you cannot find it, or some people change over time, just let us know and we will update our list and I'll be happy to resend uh, the form to you because that happens. I mean, people come and go and work. So, you know, it's, it's, it's the way it is. Uh, but if you didn't tell us, there is no way for us to know that. Um, I have a question. Sure, please. So I'm kind of new to this, um, but we did get approved for ENs one. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be approved for ENs two. Our poverty level is not where it needs to be. My question is the stuff that we got from ENs one money for Germex, you know, laptops we needed. Will we be in danger of that being taken away because we will not be approved for ENs two? No, they are two different programs. They are two separate programs from one another. If you have been approved for SORSA INS or INS one, um, mm -hmm. you are approved, and that money is there for you to spend. There is um, the poverty data that we are requesting is for reporting purposes only, and as far as we know right now, there are not going to be any changes uh, related to the data that we are requesting now. And okay. I'm going to say this. The USA changed their mind. It's not us, it's them. Um, yeah. But as far as we know right now, you are not in danger of anything. You can keep spending ins one um, with all the allowability that you have and keep, you know, keep, keep doing what you're doing for um, the sake of your kiddos at school. Okay, thank you so much. And yep. Winnie, when the uh, ins one funds come to the end of their program life, if you are participating in Title I with your local public school, then as long as you are a participating member the, with any federal program, Title I, Title II, Title III, if you're participating, then you can go, continue to keep those resources and use them. If you are non-participating, then uh, I believe back in Elizabeth's uh, timeline, there is a place where we will come back and assess your inventory. Mm -hmm. And that would be a time where we would look to say, is this something that's timed out? Is this something that um, needs to be returned? Or is it something that you can continue to use? Was it a consumable? Um, we'll go through those the same way, case by case. What we would love is that all of you are participating with your local public school so that um, services are continued and uh, we continue to support your students and teachers. Yeah. And can you elaborate a little, I don't, like, I'm, like I said, I'm really new at this. When you're saying participating with public schools, like what does that look like for our yeah, local that's, schools? That's, that's what I was going to talk about. Oh. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with that, um, there yeah. is a process. Um, that we can guide you through it, you know, and, and tell you more in detail what it means to be participating in equitable services under federal programs, which is in connection with the school district. So um, let's send me an email um, and I get back to you with a phone call and I can show you and guide you and get you plug in with the right person in the district. Um, okay. to help you get uh, through that process, okay? And I'll, I'll be more than happy to do that for anybody uh, who likes to need, or would like to need to know more about federal programs uh, for, for private schools, okay? Because we, we, we would like for everybody to participate on those. It, they are good resources and they help your kids uh, throughout the school year because ANS is gonna end in 2024, um, um, 2023 and 2024. And then after that, uh, what we're going to have is just regular federal programs. So just send me an email and I'll get back to you on, on that. And even if we have to, to um, do a, a Zoom meeting and, and you know, talk more about it, I'll be happy to do that with you. Okay, thank you so much. And Elizabeth, if I could, I would add uh, to go ahead and do that as soon as you can, because a lot of the uh, public schools have started doing their consultation process Mm -hmm. And they're in the, the midst of that right now. So you would want to get involved with them as soon as you can for yeah, that consultation. Yeah. yeah, but I can give you uh, the name, the phone number, the email address of the person that you need to talk to uh, to get you connected to that. Okay, thank you. I would also add that um, some of you may not have participated in, say, Title I services, equitable services in the past. 
but um, we are getting a Title I increase um, that's been uh, forecasted in the budget, in the federal budget. So um, sometimes non-public schools pass on the equitable services that are offered through Title I because it's not very much, uh, it's not a very big amount of services. Um, but with that increase, those are percentage wise. So it could be um, even more services than uh, were available to you in the past. So if you uh, passed on it before, we'd ask you to reconsider um, going forward. Any other so, questions? If I may, there is another thing that I would like to say before we close. Um, if you know about any other non-public school in Arkansas that you know there exist and they're not here today, please, please, please tell them about this. We would like for this information to reach out as many non-public schools in the state of Arkansas as possible. So um, if you know you have a friend that works in a non-public school and they're not here today, just tell them about it. Tell them about it and spread the word around um, because they might be eligible for um, services and we will be happy to have them with us. Elizabeth, I wanna ask one more question. Um, so the non-public schools that are participating in EANS 1, um, they've already gave, they gave their enrollment for 1920. And then you're asking for their uh, poverty numbers for 1920. And once they kind of have that to get together, that's going to be the same data that will be utilized for the EANS 2 application. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. It's so once thing. you've got that all together and make sure you've got the documentation to support it that you put in your records of retention, then you would, once we have that, we'll kind of have an idea um, a little quicker about um, what the possible allocations might be because um, we'll be using the same numbers for ENS 1 and ENS 2. Yes, um, in connection to that, I would like to say as well that for those who participated in ENS 1, since you already submit that data to us, those has to match. Um, it can be different numbers uh, from one application to the other because it's the same data we are requesting. Um, so just keep that in mind. Christine, um, we always appreciate your partnership and leadership and um, we will get this process open today. It's open and ready to go and we will count on you to be our eyes and ears when we need to come back together or have future conversations. Yeah, if you have any trouble with the application, please feel free to call me and I'll be more than happy to help you figure out what is going on um, and get you ready to go. Thank you so much. On behalf of all of our schools, we appreciate all your hard work and your ongoing support. We are very blessed in Arkansas. Um, I'm on lots of national meetings and hear about other states and, and they're not as friendly with their non as, as the folks here are in Arkansas. We appreciate that. And I'll, I'll just say along with Elizabeth, if, if the ANSA office can do anything to help you or assist you or um, just let us know, we'll do our best. We'll likely just call Elizabeth and ask the question, but, uh, or Lindsay or Deborah, but um, you can certainly reach out to us and, and let us know, send an email or a um, give us a phone call. So happy to help, happy to see so many people here today. and. And here we go again with another grant, so. Well, we're happy to support and we appreciate all of you. Um, we're in it together. They're all our kids, they're Arkansas kids and we want to take really good um, care of them and provide them the best education, no matter where they choose to go to school, we just want the best for them. So um, let, us, let us help you. Um, Elizabeth, give me your phone number. I'm gonna type it in, 501. Yes. 682-5295. Yes. So um, call Elizabeth. Um, just put, the, put that sticky note right there by your phone. 
and uh, call her as many times as you need to. Yep. And um, ask as many questions as you need to ask. Don't wonder. Pick up the phone and call. Mm -hmm. And um, and then hopefully we can get you some more services through EANS too. And you can continue to meet the needs of your students and faculty. So uh, today's mess, today's recording uh, will be flipped and posted on our website. The slides will be posted. And um, if you need anything, just let us know. Thank you. Appreciate your partnership.